The Champions League is coming back to our screens. Gab Marcotti is joining me as we finally know how the groups are looking after the UEFA Champions League draw. Gab, it is Group G where it's at. Juventus, Barcelona, Cristiano Ronaldo up against Lionel Messi in the group stages. I believe they said for the first time. So this is where it's at, man, isn't it? I mean, I think certainly in, in terms of in terms of hype, I mean, there are two tremendous stories, two clubs that have done business with each other. Of course, this summer, but you know, uh, these two men, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, have obviously driven the world football uh, conversation for for more than the past decade. And and they're still, you know, they may not be where they were, but they're still pretty darn close to the top. And I think as a football fan, every football fan out there, you don't want to miss a single minute because you don't know when it's going to end. May it last for a long, long time. But yeah, I, I, I think I completely agree. I think this is this is a standout. Massive standouts. And speaking of standouts, let's talk about Cristiano Ronaldo's old club, Manchester United. What a tough group that is looking like, Gab. I mean, they almost couldn't have asked for a tougher group with the likes of PSG and Leipzig right there. Yeah, the gods of football not very kind to um, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, there. Obviously, Paris Saint-Germain finalists uh, last season. It's still Neymar. It's still Mbappe. A bit of transition this year. We'll see what happened the last few days before uh, the window closes. And of course, that applies both to PSG and to Manchester United uh, as well. Um, but Leipzig. I mean, last season Julian Nagelsmann, you know, gave everybody fits. Um, this season. He's lost Timo Werner, sure, but he's got the only living sore loss in captivity uh, to lead the line of, uh, up front, and they have more experience. And I wouldn't discount Istanbul uh, Basaksa here either. You know, that can be a tough place to go. Uh, they have grown tremendously in the last couple, uh, couple of seasons in the Turkish Super League as well. So um, I think this group is perhaps the toughest group. Uh, definitely speaking. Speaking of a fun group now, uh, Manchester United's bitter rivals, Liverpool. We know the one-time champions as well in our recent memories. Group D, they've got Ajax, Atalanta and Michelin. What are you expecting from that group? Could Liverpool get some competition there? I think they'll get some competition. I mean, I think Liverpool are, are clearly favourites to go through, but uh, this is kind of like the football lovers, purists, high press uh, entertainment. This is the, the the fun group. I mean, obviously, Jurgen Klopp I, I, needs no introduction. I don't think Atalanta need any introduction uh, after the season that they've had last year and in previous years as well. Um, they, they've they played two games this season, already scored eight goals. Uh, Ajax, you know, maybe not as swashbuckling as as they were two years ago, but hey, a, a lot of the pieces are, are still in place, and they're they're super excited about some of their uh, new signings uh, as well, and. I chuck in Michelin as well. I mean, you know, uh, first timers here, but uh, and followers of the championship will know this. This is the team that's owned by the guy who owns uh, Brentford uh, as well. They have another high press uh, uh, philosophy. They have a passing philosophy. They are very, very, very attacking. So um, this is definitely, I think, the group for the overs. Well, no doubt that Barcelona will have their hands filled with Juventus. So let's look at their rivals, Real Madrid, because they're in Group B. And Gab, we're talking about groups that probably get us excited. This is the one that really caught my eye, Real Madrid, Shakhtar Donetsk, Inter Milan, and Borussia Mönchengladbach. I find that that could be an interesting group. How do you see it? Yeah, I think, again, on paper, this is the other um, really tough group uh, because, obviously, Antonio Conte has gone all in in the summer, he got he got the players that he wanted, Ashraf Hakimi, Arturo Vidal, he confirmed some of his loan deals. Um, uh, Real Madrid, on the other hand, uh, I think they focus more on, on moving players out, although they added uh, Martin Udegaard um, to, to, to the midfield as well. Um, I mean, this is pretty high-end stuff. And then you look past that, Marco Rosa uh, for Gladbach also hanging on to, to a lot of his stars, very tough to play against, uh, against those guys. And Shakhtar Donetsk, I mean, I think by now we've kind of gotten used to that, you know, that is about as much fun as a trip to the dentist. And, you know, Shakhtar Donetsk, a team that, you know, have made uh, the knockout round on, on, on numerous occasions over the last few years. So um, even as managers change, I think there's a strong club structure there. So I, for me, I think this is, this is the other group that, that's difficult to call. If you want to say, you know, Real Madrid and, and Inter are favorites on paper, go ahead. But... A lot of things don't pan out the way uh, we expect them to on paper. 
Two more groups I definitely want to touch on. Of course, we'll get to Bayern Munich, the defending champions. But let's just quickly look at the group that Chelsea are in. Frank Lampard, I'm sure it would be a nice feather in his young managerial career to get Chelsea deep in this competition. How happy will they be with their group? Well, he got them uh, deep into the competition uh, last season as well. I mean, I think the, the, the thing about Chelsea's group is you look at this and, you know, perhaps you've got teams in there who don't have great uh, Champions League traditions. Um, but, uh, and, and I think in, in that sense, when you look at this, when you look at sort of the up and down start they had, when you look at the expectations um, after the, the, the summer spending spree that we witnessed here at Stamford Bridge, um, you know, you might say, okay, well, that can be a bit of relief. But I'll tell you what, I mean, and we've seen this every single year in the Champions League, you know, you drop points early on, match day one, match day two, match day three, all of a sudden, the, the, it becomes a huge pain. It becomes a huge drain. And then it affects how you perform in the league. So um, could have gone worse for Chelsea, of course. Um, could have gone far worse. But equally, um, I don't think Frank Lampard Jr. will be want to be taking this for granted. And finally, the defending champs, Bayern Munich, of course, Atletico Madrid, Salzburg, and Lokomotiv Moscow in their group. How happy will the champions be with that? Um, I think they'll be happy uh, to a point. Um, I think we've seen early on, though, as we saw in the Super Cup, as Hansi Flick uh, alluded to as well, um, they don't have the greatest steps in the world for what is going to be a really, really, you know, intense, congested season. And, you know, when you look at this, Salzburg, we saw it last season, didn't we? With, um, you know, when, when, they were in, when they were in Liverpool's group. You know, this is a team that, that can go in and they'll just attack you. They'll, they'll make life difficult for you. They'll spring surprises. Uh, they, they'll be very draining to play against. Um, I, I don't think, you know, again, on paper, it is as obviously a more straightforward draw. They are the defending champions. That, that is to be understood. But uh, equally, again, I think this, this, is, this is something where they can be made to sweat a little bit. And finally, I guess before we wrap, I know it's super, super early, but um, too early to ask you if you have a favorite. Alexis, the transfer window doesn't even shut until until Monday. I think a lot of things can a lot of things can change. A lot of things can evolve. You know, maybe Jaden Sancho will land at Old Trafford. You'll like that. And then all of a sudden, yeah, exactly. So uh, now, look. I mean, realistically, we expect it to be. I mean, look at who's won it in recent years. You expect it to be one of the traditional blue bloods. But uh, you know what? I I, I think. And we saw this last season, um, again, with Atalanta and others, and, and Leon doing so well in the competition. Um, I'm not going out on a limb, not until I've seen these guys play, not until we understand how you know, they will have been affected as well by some of the, um, by some of the restrictions that are in place with the global pandemic, uh, by the more congested fixtures. Uh, so, uh, no, you're not going to trick me into making a, a, a prediction <laughs> this early. Fair enough. We'll see if, um, if Jaden Sancho could go to Man United and... and play centre-back in that way. Hold up, <laughs> Kylian Mbappe. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.